up you guys welcome back to the channel my name is Giselle and if you're new here I'm an ultrasound technologist that lives in Vegas and I love Disney and yeah so today's video is just me going over some exams that I am doing tonight I work 7 p.m. to 7 30 a.m. and I've had a few like really interesting cases so I wanted you guys to see that when you work in a hospital you're not really going to get a ton of really normal exams or perfect exams, pretty exams. You're going to get some interesting exams. You're going to get some difficult exams, hard exams to do, not only because of the pathologies or abnormalities within the patients, but also because they are just really hard to do because sometimes they're in a lot of pain, they're moving a lot, they can't stay still, and they're not going to like help you out to make you have a good picture. So you have to do your best as an ultrasound technologist to make the picture as good as it can be get and I'm going to show you some images these images are not pretty so don't judge me and be kind to one another be kind in the comments be kind to one another the world is already hard it's hard enough already so with that being said let's just hop right into these exams that I've done already all right you guys so for the first exam that I had today it was on a pediatric patient he was born with a rare congenital disease called dandy walker syndrome now dandy walker syndrome has something to do with the brain and when he was younger he had a tube that was put into his brain and it connects to the abdomen area they call this a VP shunt so with the VP shunt you will be able to see that shunt inside of the abdomen and this patient presented to the ER today because he was vomiting had headaches and they just wanted to make sure that the VP shunt was okay that there was no fluid collections within the abdomen so what we would do as an ultrasound technologist is go in there and scan the abdomen scan all around to make sure there's no fluid collections and to make sure we can see the shunt so I'll show you some of those images right here Typically, you're going to look at all four quadrants, the whole entire abdomen. So your images are going to be including the right upper quadrant, the left upper quadrant, and the lower right quadrant. So you're going to just take all four quadrant images, but of course, you're going to check the whole entire abdomen to make sure that there's no fluid collections there. So I started at the right upper quadrant, and then I kept going, and boom, I saw the shunt. Here's the shunt. You can see the very echogenic linings right here, and I just labeled it. You can put an arrow there so you can show the shunt. There's some blood flow, some vessels. This is the pancreas area. And yeah, pancreas right here. Shunt, arrow again to the shunt. The images look really bright for some reason. It's my phone looking at the computer, but I promise you the image is really not that bright on the machine. <laughs> so yeah, I took pictures of it. Shunt, that's the gallbladder and the liver right there. And then left upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, left lower quadrant. So all those areas have no fluid collections or anything like that. And yeah, this is that exam. We're just making sure that this shunt is in there and that there's nothing going on in the area, no fluid collections. So I'll show you what I said on the sonographer worksheet. So on my general report, I just wrote that he had a history of a VP shunt. Per the doctor, they wanted me to check for fluid collections and see if the shunt was visible. So then I'd say VP shunt visualized. I did not see a pseudocyst, so I said no definite pseudocyst seen and no fluid collections within the abdominal regions. Simple as that. Don't make it too hard on yourself. Next exam I wanted to talk to you guys about is of a patient who came in who was pregnant, was having generalized abdominal pain and weakness, and she had already had a pregnancy ultrasound done earlier, but then they ordered a renal ultrasound, so then I went to go get her to do that, and we performed a renal ultrasound. At our hospital, we do bladder, and then we do IVC, aorta, and kidneys. So let's take a look at what I found. So here's her bladder, everything was okay. Bladder's okay. Oh, there's a little baby. You can see the baby there. So here's the IVC. Clear as day. Color. Here's the aorta. This is artifact here, you guys. Gotta clean it up. See how ultrasound can make it look like there's something there, but really there's not. But there's really not there. That's artifact. On my machine, it looks much less. The, com the phone and the computer is making it look like there's something there, but there's not. So there's the aorta, color flow, 
aorta distal, color flow. So in her epigastric area, her stomach was really dilated with fluid, so I just showed that. But then boom, I saw her gallbladder, and her gallbladder had a stone in it. See this really echogenic structure with some shadowing going down? That is a gallbladder stone. Right here you see some sludge, echogenic sludge that's within the gallbladder. See that? There's the twinkle artifact on the stone, and this is all artifact here, but vessels around it, and yeah, that's the gallbladder there. Proving there's a stone with a shadowing. In trans, always color, black and white, trans, sag. I also measured the wall, make sure it's not thickened. Went to her kidneys, kidneys look normal. Normal, normal kidneys. Went back to the stone because I turned her left lateral decube to see if it moved. And look at that, it moved and the sludge moved too. Sludge is over there now. So yeah, make sure you move them because you want to make sure that is the stone moving? Is the sludge moving? I also take a look at the common bile duct because you want to see if it's thickened, dilated, you know, any fluid collections around it measure it and make sure it's okay, especially because you're looking at the gallbladder. But those are incidental findings because we're doing a kidney ultrasound. So let's talk about the report. So basically they wanted to make sure she didn't have any hydronephrosis and any kidney stones. I wrote down her history, which is that generalized abdominal pain. She was vomiting and she had felt weak since last night. She's pregnant, history of kidney stones. So this is everything I want the doctor to see and know. Um, her aorta was patent. These are her measurements. We wanna make sure that there's no aneurysm. IVC was patent. Common bile duct was two millimeters. Gallbladder, the wall thickness measurement was 1.5, so not thickened. It was an incidental finding because we're doing a kidney ultrasound. So I said mobile sludge and eight millimeter stone within the gallbladder. No wall thickening, no free fluid. Her Murphy sign was negative. Always do a Murphy sign if they have a gallbladder. Common bile duct was normal. Right and left kidney were both normal, within normal limits bladder I didn't really see her jets and then I just reiterated that the incidental findings were there the gallbladder stone and sludge and that she had a dilated fluid filled stomach so pretty simple right you just write everything that you see and describe it the next exam I did was a really difficult testicular ultrasound so here's the history patient recently was discharged and was back for shortness of breath and headache they have been having scrotal pain for two days the left side was greater than the right no trauma to the area and he's a new dialysis patient we were given the options to enter stuff in boxes and i just talked about the appearance right side and the left side both were heterogeneous we measure the testicles and we also checked the epis so i made sure i could see both of them they both had an epi cyst we wanted to make sure that there's blood flow to the testicles so there's that it's negative for torsion and i did have to say that the patient was difficult because because I had some poor quality imaging, they could not stop shaking and they couldn't stay still. So my images basically took the plunge for that because when you're moving a lot, the color flow shows a lot of artifacts. So let's take a look. Here's that typical buddy image where both testicles are right next to each other. And you wanna show the color differences for both of them. And then I just go through the protocol, go through the testicles, make sure we're measuring them, checking blood flow, making sure there's flow there, checking the epis, there are some cysts on both sides, checking the inguinal canals to make sure there's no hernias. And yeah, it's a pretty simple exam, but sometimes you can just see some weird crazy things. Some cysts in the epis. And we do valsalvas to make sure there's no hernias and we're checking for varicoceles as well. I hate how the computer makes my images look so bright. I promise I don't scan that bright. Basically for that testicular ultrasound, the left testicle had more vascularity to it. There was also increased vascularity to the right inguinal canal, so I mentioned those. And the radiologist just said that there was no mass or torsion seen. Increased vascularity in the left testicle, which suggests orchitis, which is infection of the testicle. There was just increased vascularity in the right inguinal canal. So they pretty much just repeated what I said. See, where the doctor's eyes. <laughs> The next patient that I'm going to show you is a pelvic exam. This patient had a recent vaginal birth about 11 days ago, 
and they wanted to make sure that there's no retained products of conception within the endometrium which is stuff left from the pregnancy still inside the uterus and that can happen and if you do have that it can cause an infection so we are there to make sure that there's nothing in the endometrium so she came in for lower abdominal pain chest pain shortness of breath and fever and she's been having some vaginal bleeding since then so let's take a look at her uterus her uterus is pretty large there's the endometrium there within it if there was retained products of conception, the endometrium would contain a lot of echogenic, irregular, heterogeneous material and it would light up with the color Doppler flow, but that didn't happen. Oh man, I swear my images aren't this bright. Looks so bright, oh my gosh. But I saw her ovaries, there's a left one, and there's her right one. So everything was okay. I did a dual shot to show the right and the left ovary. And then I showed the uterus again. No fluid collections or anything like that. So here's the worksheet. I just described everything that I saw. I said that we didn't do the T-Vag because she just had a vaginal birth and you don't want to insert anything into the canal. She was negative for ovarian torsion, no discrete abnormality seen, and um, yeah, nothing really going on. Just a really large enlarged postpartum uterus. I'm going to go over one more exam. This is the fifth exam and they all had something going on weirdly with them, but let's take a look at this pregnancy ultrasound that I just did. She's here for vaginal pain, lower pelvic pain on the left side greater than the right side. She's had a history of an ectopic pregnancy, which is a pregnancy that was somewhere else, not inside the endometrium. So she's just being extra careful because she is now pregnant again and she wanted to get checked. So we did a pelvic ultrasound. So the images are really, really too bright for you guys to look at. When I place my camera on the computer, it like makes it so bright you can't even see it. So I'm just gonna explain a little bit about what I saw. In her endometrium, it was a little thickened. There was a gestational sac and a yolk sac scene. And when I measured them, it was only measuring five weeks three days but I did not see a fetal pole. So when you don't see a fetal pole but you see a gestational sac that means that it's probably just very too early for you to see the fetal pole and the patient has to get another ultrasound within about a week or two especially if she's having this pain and stuff she needs to get checked again but I didn't really see anything going on it's just that she had this cystic structure in her left ovary and I'm thinking that's what's causing her pain on the left side. So let me see if I can show you guys, or maybe I'll just take some pictures and hopefully it'll, it'll show better. Okay, yeah, so I took some pictures and it looks much better. So I'm going to insert those pictures here so you guys can see them, but pretty much on her left ovary, there's this complex cystic structure here. There was no increased flow around it and I just basically described it. And then there is the yolk sac and gestational sac within the endometrium. But like I said, no fetal pole seen, so she's probably just really early. So I went to go check her HCG levels and her HCG levels was 7,644. Now on her worksheet, I just described everything that I saw. And I'll put that right here so you guys can kind of see it. All right, you guys, so that's pretty much it. Those were the five exams that I wanted to show you, and we still have the rest of the night to go. I'm gonna do some more stats and then do some routines when we have the time to do them. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that. See how in the hospital you're gonna see some crazy things. When you're a student, you're gonna scan as much normal as you can. And when you go into the field, go into clinicals, go into externship, you're gonna see a lot of abnormal things or just things that shouldn't be there, and that's gonna give you the indication to say hey what's going on you're going to measure things in two planes you're going to put color flow you're going to do so many things to optimize your image but remember that when you start always aim for a very pretty picture if you can and if you can't it's okay you're not going to always get a pretty picture as always be kind to one another please don't judge my images i know what i'm doing and they just look really ugly because sometimes it's just really hard to get a very pretty picture especially when you're going fast in the hospital because you want to make sure these patients are 
more comfortable than anything. You are caring for these patients and sometimes they don't want you to push down on their belly for too long. So you just kind of have to do what you can, do the best you can, and as always, be kind to your patients, be kind to one another, and stay positive. And if you guys like this video, please push that like button. Comment down below if you wanna see more. I'm so sorry these are really long, but I didn't realize it would probably take a minute or two to talk about each exam. And I try to go fast. So if you guys like these, please let me know and we'll do more. Thank you guys so much and we'll see you in the next video.